Hello, welcome to Straw Family Farm Take 2. I'm Christy. Um, today in the chapel we have Psalms 147.3. It says, He healeth the broken in heart and bindeth up their wounds. Um, just kind of feeling yucky. Not, not yucky, just blah. Just, I don't know. Out of sorts, I guess. I have no clue what it means. I'm just, just blah. So, just getting through the days and some days feeling overwhelmed and other days not so much and I don't know. Just one of those off times, I guess. So, we're going to move right on into it um, with Totally Hooked. And finally, and I've already blocked this, but I finished the last virus shawl that I need. And it is beautiful. Now remember, I did this in the same yarn, but I did it center pull, and this one, of course, I did outside pull, and they look, I mean, they look the same, they're the same pattern, but the colors just make it, because this one will have the light part to your skin, and the other one will have the dark part to your skin, so yeah, even the camera's having fun with that one, huh? Um, I do have to weave in the ends. I forgot to do it before I blocked the three, so I may have to re-block them a little bit, but just on the corner. And it's just one corner. I work in the other ends as I go, so I'm not really too worried about it. Um, they are gifts, and once they're woven in, it'll be fine. So I have that one totally hooked. I still have um, one headband to make and the hat. And then I think I'm about done. I'm done with the office stuff. So um, after that, I just have to figure out what I'm doing for like RJ and the guy. I can't make him another hat. He's got a hat. He's got a blanket. I don't know what I'm going to do for him. But I'm going to do something. May end up, I don't know, actually purchasing one. But I've got enough of the gray left. Um of this to do the other headband and I also have enough of the tan to do another headband if I wanted to um, and then this one right here is the hat it's a gray but it's a lighter weight so and the hat really won't take me a couple hours if I sit down and get on it but y'all know I kind of got bored with doing all of these and those so what have I been working on um, the greatest progress will be seen right here in this, and I don't know what I'm going to do with it yet. I threatened to keep it, but I might use it for Christmas as well, and it's this pattern right here, um, and it's a bag. It's made with three squares, so I have my first one done. Okay, again, the end's still up there. Hey, hitch, worm, play nice. So I have this one done, and then I have this one over half done if I don't pull out any stitches. And this is just a cotton. I just really like the colors. Um, there we go. And I'm just doing it on a little hook. So um, they sent me two balls of this. I have to make three squares. It looks like this second square. There might be enough to finish it, maybe not, but I still have a whole ball and I only have one more square to do. So, and the handle. So I should have more than enough. I really should. And I did make a Swiffer cover just out of white cotton, um, just because I needed one. And I have not found a really good way to get those on. Um, I like to make the ones they go up over the edge, but I like to make them long so they really stay in place. But like I said, I haven't really found a good way to get them on, so I just stretch them. <laughs> stretch them a lot, and it looks like it's going to break. You know, it's like, oh my God, is this going to rip? But I get them on there, and yeah. Uh, I just like them to stay in place, and I hate the buying more Swiffer things, so yeah. Oh, well. All right. I think that's all I have for Totally Hooked. And that's all I have for In the Basket.
Um, I don't have anything in the pots, but um, I'm sorry, my mouth is dry today. Uh, okay, but I have, um, I don't remember if y'all remember, but I guess the first part of this year, maybe the end of last year, no, I think it was the first part of this year, let me look here, yeah, in February, I picked up um, two pounds of some uh, New Zealand Romney top, and I picked up two pounds of domestic wool, and then I picked up some primitive wool, two pounds of it, and I got it from R.L. Lindsay, R. Look, um, R.H. Lindsay Company, and it was really, it was nicely cleaned. It was, um, like I said, uh, the primitive isn't the softest, but it was seventeen dollars for two pounds. That's pretty good. Um, the domestic that I got was only fifteen dollars for two pounds, so we're talking like fifty. Uh, Seven fifty a pound. Um, the primitive, it looks like, was eight fifty a pound. Um, so, yeah, and I've already done like I want to say a pound of the primitive, but I decided to get back to spinning. So I'm gonna move this just a little bit. Bring this right over here. So I'm doing it on my little Wrangler, which is a older kiwi okay you know they've got the kiwi 2 the kiwi 3 this is just a kiwi um no bells and whistles no improvements just the original version and i have been spinning it and my plan is to almost make it worsted but if you know my spinning i spin kind of thin so yeah let me there we go yeah jump the hook there we go so it's actually coming out really nice um it's got some halo to it and stuff and it's not super soft i mean it's it wouldn't irritate my face and it wouldn't it might irritate my neck but my neck is really sensitive so i mean the back of my hand is soft um so where i use it um i don't know yet I still have the pound that I did and dyed, but I really am missing dyeing, so I am going to uh, probably spin um, so that I can get enough to at least put something in the dye pot. You know, I, I tend to go through these phases, and Christmas I'm trying to do it, and I want it done, and then of course. I love to spin and I love to dye so um, washing the wool is not really what I want but I also found some uh, straw family farm fiber that was left and I'm going to spin it up and I don't know what I'll do with it yet but we'll see um, it's already dyed it was some bats that we did for a sale I want to say a year ago so it's already washed it's already done um, I'm just gonna spin them up and see what they see if they tell me that they want to be something I don't know so I have been spinning and you can see how much I've got on here um, I ripped that off because it was this ball was going everywhere and worm decided that he really likes to attack well so yeah not happening <laughs> i uh put this one in my basket and i had this little ball so i control him uh he likes wool he likes yarn he likes wool he just he's definitely my kind of dog so i do have this one that i am working on and that is what is on my wheel and like i said i'm just doing it on my little wrangler and let me see if I can do this. Um, 
because I think we have some different viewers. I don't know. This is my little Wrangler. It's the old Kiwi. It actually has the bird in here. It is very well loved. No, I don't get upset when it's dirty. It's been chewed on, pooped on. I take it places you would normally not take a spinning wheel, as in out in the pasture, watch the sheep. It's got, um, <laughs> and I don't even remember who did this, but if you look right there, you can see I have chew marks, and I can't remember, I want to say one of the sheep, it, it might have been a goat. I think the goat's gnawed on it. Um, I was spinning, and I remember I walked away, and then I don't know if the goats got it or whatever. Anyway, I just took sandpaper and went over it and made it so it's not rough, and yeah, the paint, when I first got it, I painted it to look, it, it's blue and sparkly. Um, it is now almost a gray color. The paint is chipped, but it is my go-to wheel, especially with um, dogs like Hitch. Leave that wool alone. Hitch. Uh-uh. Leave it. I know. Leave it. Um, him and Worm both love wool. Uh, he's better at leave it than Worm is. So, um, but he, it's just my wheel that, number one, it was my first wheel. I had dropped spindle until I got this one. And then I took it everywhere with me, from fiber festivals to pastures to, you could have seen me out just when I lived at the farm, I'd just be out there on the bench spinning. Um, just, it was my wind down time. And then I found um, that I, I wanted more. So I, I have gotten my old Miss Kitty wheel and the walking wheel and all of that stuff gathered in one place my mother still has some old ones that she says she's going to send to me. I have a feeling it'll be when she passes <laughs> that I'll get them. I'll probably have to pry them out of her cold, dark, dead hands. But anyway, um, some of hers are older. Uh, okay, they're really old. But she has promised them to me, so hopefully I'll get those. Um, I can assemble them faster than anyone in the house, just so you know. Wow. My mother used to tell me not to play with it, and I would do the thing so fast that the little thing would come off. I don't know the technical terms with the old one, but anyway, I could have seen it because my mom would be like, you better not be touching that wheel, and I had been sitting there spinning, 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 and I would be able to put it all back together and be sitting there when she <laughs> walked in the room, and she's like, you were messing with it again, weren't you? My brother and sister always told on me, but yeah, I nope nope does it look like I was messing with it <laughs> so I've had a fatuation with wheels for a long time anyway so that's what's on the wheel I do hope to get some spinning done and get some dyeing done uh, I really just want to get my hands back into it and no my life isn't perfect where I've got my big tubs and I can go out there and do all this and but I can do it on a small scale. So I can just tone it down and have fun. So in the fields, um, I went and found some cantaloupe and I found some peaches and plums. Yeah, not, I don't know if it's just me, but the peaches this year do not have good flavor. And then I saw on TV something about um, the peach festival this year. They didn't have as good a crop, something about the weather. Um, we got a lot of rain and it got hot and then it got cold and then there was a late freeze, which is what I lost a lot of my stuff to. And then there was all these storms. So yeah, I'm glad to know, well, I really want my peaches to taste better. <laughs> I'm glad to know it wasn't just me that failed in the gardening aspect this year. Um, so yeah. Uh, let's see what else is going on in RJ's world. Um, he is getting ready. I saw him this morning uh, and took him some dog food, as a matter of fact. Got some stuff done. Uh, he's got a shirt. You know, last week I put patches on. He's got one that needs to slide a button on the cuff. 
and uh, I'm gonna wash it up and press it and make it all, you know. It, it's his sponsor shirts. I don't do his laundry other than his sponsor shirts. Um, I make them look pristine and he goes through them at a time and then sometimes he'll bring them to me to fix up or um, iron or whatever. And, and I don't mind doing that because he's got like eight or nine of them. Um, unfortunately, roping is not something you can wear a shirt and then you make it last another day. Um, even if he changes, when you go out there, you get dusty, you get dirty, you get cow poop, you get everything. And if it's muddy, then you add in all of that. So he really, it's like eight performances, but he has four other shirts. And if I fix this one, he's got four of the shirts. So he'll have 12 shirts and he can go a couple of weeks on that. And then he should be able to do it again, you know, so, uh, he's been doing that. I have been, um, trying to get our vacation together. 2021 is our second year. You know, every two years I try to get my kids together just to have some family time away from everything. And while I'm not living on the farm, RJ still is, and he has a lot of stress. Um, and he's seeing how much mom really did do. So I am trying to get that together for the first part of October. So you may not have a podcast that week. Um, it's not going so well. RJ's really scared to walk away from the farm because it's all on him now. Um, but I'm hoping to be able to get him there, even if just for a couple of days, you know, we go up to Branson, have a nice place there and, uh, just kind of hang out and we go to the fish hatchery and the dam and there's some hiking trails that we do and just go and relax. I take my spinning wheel. I take my crochet, you know, um, it is what it is. And so we're trying to get that together. Um, what else? Uh, I picked up, and this is kind of rough on me, okay? It, it's just, I lost Moose, um, earlier this year, and probably seven months ago, six months ago, um, took me a few months to realize that I still wanted a, you know, a dog go around. And at that point, I wasn't, Hitch was here to be adopted out, not to be our dog. Um, so, anyway, Moose had clothes. He had a little t-shirt. He had bow ties. He had um, bandanas that he wore. Um, and, of course, I still had Rebels. For those of you who remember that far back, he was my St. Bernard. And he was a rescue too. Um, he had hip dysplasia and he didn't, we had him for many years. RJ was little and loved that dog to death. I think he was in second grade when we got him and he was my big dog before Jethro. So anyway, I still have all of those and I'm going to modify them for Hitch and Worm. I don't know if Hitch will leave the bandanas on, but everything I make just slides on their collar. So whether it be a bow tie or I think uh, Moose had some flowers too that in the spring he put a flower on. Um, but I am going to, I dug out the tote from the farm and brought it here to my house and um, I'm going to work on those I think today. It's just going to make me happy. Uh, I know that worm goes everywhere with me, but it's not the same. Not the same. He goes to work with me every day. He's home with me every day. He does laundry with me every day. He still socks. He's a sock thief. Um, Hitch is here with me all the time. He does not travel well. He stresses. He can't handle it, and his heart really shouldn't be that way. Hitch. And worm. They got the zoomies. Okay. Hitch. Chill. Okay. That monstrosity you just heard is this thing running through the house. And Hitch chasing him. Okay. Stop. 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 Wanna uh, uh, uh. chill on any of this? Go play with your toys. Yeah, that happens sometimes. So I apologize. Hey, 
That's enough. Go. So, apparently they're not going to go. They're going to be around my feet. Well, maybe. Anyway, they do play together very well. You do have to get on to Hitch a little bit to be easy because he's just bigger and he doesn't know he's bigger. And there goes Worm, so there goes Hitch. Anyway, Hitch came running across the floor, had no stop in about hit into the wall but anyway <laughs> I'm sorry oh they're getting drinks of water now they've wore themselves out uh I couldn't cue that better if I, I, I know I was talking about the dogs anyway oh I brought the tote back <laughs> the dog topic interrupted by dogs please stand by <laughs> uh okay so I brought the tote back and I am going to work on incorporating them back into the way I have my dogs. Um, that means wearing bandanas and wearing uh, bow ties and just being cute. Um, Worm does go to work with me every week. I did make him a hat. He didn't like it. Uh, I'm okay with that, but I do like the bow ties that I make to put on their collar or their, you know, and I do like having them. The, most of the time, they were always dressed in a bandana. I had birthday ones, bedtime ones. I changed them two or three times a day sometimes. Just whatever the notion hit me. So I, I brought that tote. I will be washing them and ironing them, um, making them pristine again, and adjusting the size. Because I'm going to take Rebels, big ones, that I haven't used on anyone. And I'm going to convert them down to be hitches. And I'm going to take mooses. And I am only going to convert a couple for Worm because Worm's still growing. And if he, as he grows, he'll probably be a little bit bigger than Moose. Um, like I said, we found out some things about Moose's health um, after the fact. Uh, he was a little on the small side, but we just didn't think much about it. But they think he had a heart defect. And um, kind of like Hitch has a, an enlarged heart. We don't know what Moose's was. Um, and then, of course, he had some blood issues that we were unaware of. So, anyway, they said that when the dogs stay small like that, sometimes they can have other issues that we had no clue to, I mean, he got physicals, but all they did was listen, and you know, that doesn't tell you that the heart is large or small or whatever. It tells you, okay, it's pumping. Mm -hmm. He was a small dog, so it sounded fine for his size, but it may not have been. So he lived the best life he could with us, and I am thinking that Worm, regardless of size, doesn't need all of those cut down to fit his collar right now. So I'm going to pick out a couple and have him maybe two or three and that way as he grows he still has some that you know when he reaches full size he should fit into mooses that i already have and then i i will probably make some more if you know me you know i go to hobby lobby and get the cheap little bandanas and i can cut and make one for hitch and two for moose or moose two for worm out of the same one so uh yeah we'll see how that goes but anyway, I am planning on doing that today, kind of freshening them up and checking it out. Like I said, I've been in a funk. And as you can see, the thought of moose is just breaking my heart all over again. Um, oh, on another note, Cripple, the other calf that we had that came to us with a broken leg, he went to the butcher shop um, and his... He is getting ready to fulfill his destiny. He was having trouble walking. The law is, is that they have to walk across a scale. So in order to be butchered. And we didn't want him just to be wasted. Um, but he was having trouble getting around. He only weighed in. Gordy weighed in more than him at about 1,200 pounds. He only weighed in at about 900 pounds. But his leg was broke different. And so, yeah. We're going to have him slaughtered and then probably, I think they let him hang. They slaughter and then they let him hang for like three weeks. 
Um, and so it'll be a month, month and a half before we get that meat back. So, but yep, little cripple calf is gone. Um, and he has gone to fill his destiny. So, uh, I think that's poor kid. He's just panting. He's just sitting there panting. Of course, when I move the camera, he gets up. But a lot of moving that camera today. I don't know what the deal is with me. But anyway, um, I'm going to get off of here. I'm doing some laundry. I've got to um, scrub the floor. Hitch still gets upset at storms and loses all his bodily functions. And I cleaned it up, but I didn't scrub it. Scrub it, so that will be scrubbed. Um, and then, of course, I'm going to work on some spinning and some sewing and making these guys some uh, bandanas. And I forgot to pick up my stuff. I was going to start making some bags, and I didn't get my stuff picked up. So I'll pick it up next time, and then I'll work on it. And Worm is trying to treadle the spinning wheel. Mm-hmm. He just stands on it. Mm. But he is getting bigger. He's six pounds. The 30th, he goes for his final round of shots, including rabies, and then he is fully vaccinated. Um, his next step is to get him snipped because he has dropped. And I want to wait till he weighs a little bit more. Um, I don't want him going into surgery at under 10 pounds. It's just my thing. Um, I had Moose done, and he scared me to death. But his weight like at fully grown was nine pounds so yeah he was I think seven months old when he went in maybe eight months old and they're off and running again uh, so yeah they're very happy dogs let's just put it that way but anyway moose was smaller than I like to do and it just made me crazy so I'm hoping that he'll reach 10 pounds and then I can get him done uh, the vet that I'm using doesn't want to do him before he's four or five months old. So, which is fine with me. Absolutely fine with me. Um, because I think by that time he might be 10 pounds. So, all right. I think that's it. I'm just wondering what they're into. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to get off of here and I will, I know it's kind of short and sweet. I have been spinning. Hopefully, if I get some spun up, I get to die. Um, I might be making some soaps. I've got to go and count my soaps and see if I'm going to do that. And I will let you know where that stands. Scrubbing the floor is my task of the day. And then my fun is going to be going through all of it. And I don't know why, but it may tear me up a little bit. You know, remembering things that, that I made those bandanas for so but I want to do it and I want to get these two dogs as my dogs you know and it's hard when you've had the mindset of I'm gonna get hitched adopted out and then something happens not only does he have the behavioral issues but then he's got you know health issues it, it just it's hard to switch that mindset I mean I've always loved him but I just had maintained a certain amount of distance because he wasn't here. He was just here as a rescue. He was just going to be moving on. Well, now he's mine, and I have no idea if he's going to wear bandanas or not, but I sure am going to try because I like my dogs to wear bandanas. So, all right, I'm off of here. Love hugs and blessings to everybody. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe. I appreciate it, and I'll talk to you all next week. Bye.